In this visit, I'll talk about the CT coronary angiogram. The CT coronary angiogram is a heart test that can give an answer to two different questions. The first, is this person's symptoms, say chest pain, due to coronary artery disease, cholesterol buildup inside the lining of the heart blood vessels, or something less serious, say reflux esophagitis or muscle strain? And the second question, does this person have coronary artery disease, cholesterol buildup, that is so serious that he needs coronary artery bypass graft surgery or coronary angioplasty stent to live longer? The CT coronary angiogram works like a traditional coronary angiogram with some differences that make it safer than the traditional coronary angiogram, but also somewhat less powerful. In the traditional coronary angiogram, the doctor places a flexible tube called a catheter directly into the openings of the heart blood vessels. He then injects dye directly into each of these blood vessels. This allows him to see the blood vessels outlined in silhouette by the dye. And with the traditional coronary angiogram, if he finds a serious blockage, he can fix it right then with a balloon angioplasty stent. However, the traditional coronary angiogram has a small but real risk of causing a heart attack, stroke, or death. The newer CT coronary angiogram uses the CT scanner to make pictures of the coronary arteries using thin x-ray slices and the powerful CT computer. The CT coronary angiogram is safer than the traditional x-ray coronary angiogram because it uses dye injected into a vein. In the traditional x-ray coronary angiogram, the dye is injected directly into the opening of the heart arteries, the coronary arteries, which is riskier than the CT coronary angiogram. However, both tests share some of the same strengths and weaknesses. The strength of both is that if either is abnormal, showing cholesterol buildup in the heart blood vessels, then we can say yes, the patient has coronary artery disease and therefore is at high risk of heart attack or heart attack death. The weakness of both of them is that a person could have a normal traditional coronary angiogram or a normal CT coronary angiogram and still have cholesterol buildup in the heart blood vessels that just didn't show up on the test. And in this case, the person could still be at high risk of heart attack or heart attack death. This doesn't mean they aren't great tests, they are. It just means that like all tests in medicine, they have strengths and weaknesses. And it means that the doctor has to consider the results of these tests along with all the other tests and information he has to make the right diagnosis and to prescribe the right treatment. But the most important problem that both of these tests share is the problem of the indeterminate lesion. In both tests, dye outlines the heart blood vessels. The doctor looks at these outlines of the heart arteries to see if there are any areas of abnormal narrowing. If there are any areas of abnormal narrowing, uh, then the doctor can answer the first question, yes. The person's symptoms say chest pain is due to coronary artery disease, meaning cholesterol buildup. Both tests can have a problem answering the second question. Does this person have coronary artery disease, cholesterol buildup that is so severe that he may need coronary artery bypass graft surgery or an angioplasty stent to lessen his risk of death or of severe heart damage. If the doctor sees only mild narrowing of the silhouette of the outlined heart arteries, then he can answer the question. No, in this case, the patient does not need bypass or angioplasty stent to lower his risk of death or of severe heart damage. If the doctor sees severe narrowing in one or more of the heart arteries, on either of the dye tests, then he may be able to say yes, the patient needs bypass or angioplasty stent to lessen the risk of death 
or of severe heart damage? The answer depends on where the severe narrowings are in the heart arteries. But the problem is that many of the narrowings of the heart blood vessels are neither very mild nor very severe. They are what's called intermediate lesions, meaning that the doctor can't tell by looking at the angiogram, traditional or CT, whether or not the narrowing is bad enough to need bypass or angioplasty stent. The doctor has to rely on other tests to decide if an intermediate lesion needs bypass or angioplasty stent. Again, this doesn't mean that, that these aren't great tests, they are. It just means that no one test has the answer for every single patient. In an upcoming visit, I'll talk about the tests we use to decide if an intermediate coronary artery lesion is severe enough to require bypass or angioplasty stent. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful.